Radio. This podcast is called Obsessed. Joseph Scrimshaw and his guest get some secrets off their chest. You should listen. It's the best. Hello and welcome to Obsessed with me, Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm sitting in my home with a great uh, comedian, a tweeter, a (laughs) podcaster, uh, and a writer, Jess Dweck. Hi. Thanks for coming and doing this. Yeah, no problem. I'm very flattered that you described me first as a comedian because I feel like I'm just like a Twitter comedian. I mean, I did do stand up briefly, but not long enough or good enough to call myself a real comedian. Okay. So I appreciate the compliment. I guess I'm more of a more of a writer. You're more of a writer. That's so that's your main noun. I've dabbled. I've dabbled in the comedy, but but mostly everything a you do is comedy, right? Uh, I mean, just yeah, my, my <laughs> social life, just my. My just my daily life, yes. Yeah. Everything is unintentionally or intentionally funny. <laughs> uh, but you're, uh, you're, you're. A, we're a writer for the Tonight Show, right? Yes, in... late, uh, uh, late night, and then the Tonight Show in New York. Cool. Um, then I came out here. I wrote for this Netflix comedy, this upcoming animated Netflix comedy called Big Mouth with Nick Kroll. It's very funny. Oh, Comes nice. out in the fall. You should watch it. Um, then I was briefly at Corden, and now I'm writing on the Showtime comedy that. Um, will probably be out in the fall, but we'll see. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know. That's yeah. Cool. So, did you like doing stand up? Did you stop just because you had too much going on? Oh, I well, I stopped because I got a job writing jokes, and yeah. I was like, oh, I don't have to get on a stage and humiliate myself. Uh, yeah, I think I'll choose that instead. Uh, <laughs> the quiet no, I glory would... instead of the humiliating <laughs> yeah, grab I... at glory. I feel like people who meet me are not not that they're shocked, but like if there's ever something where they're like, do you want to get on stage and do this? I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Like as long as something, as long as I have either something memorized or I can read off something, I'll do anything in front of a group of people to embarrass myself. I really don't care. (laughs) And the reason is because doing like open mics for a year, just like um, beats all the shame out of you because you've just, you've, you know, bombed in front of just, you know, empty, half empty, crowded rooms and You just, there's nothing I won't do on stage. I mean, not, you know, I have limits, but I just, I have no shame about embarrassing myself on stage in front of strangers. But I, yeah, I just, I felt like I, I, this sounds arrogant, but I thought I was pretty good at the joke writing part of it, but I couldn't really perform them well. I didn't have like a persona or a funny voice or a, like I'm a woman, but I didn't want to talk about like sex stuff. So it's like, I don't know how to be funny and f- for you people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my jokes in other people's yeah, mouths. I'll just have other people say them and they'll be much better. Did you do uh, good shows that weren't just a group of 10 angry other comedians? At well, open mics? I mean, I wanted to, but you know, you have to work up to that. I think toward the end of my year, year and a half kind of um, uh, pounding the pavement with that, I was starting to get booked on like, a friend of a friend show okay. deep deep into Bushwick, but that was kind of the point at which I my development stopped. Okay, okay, yeah. I could see you having a very good persona. I don't know you super well. <laughs> I was still but... in the phase of like I'm going to do Holocaust jokes to shock people. Like I didn't really <laughs> okay, like <laughs> move beyond that. So yeah, my my development as a as a uh, performing comedian is very stunted. Okay, it stopped at the Holocaust. It's, yeah, it stopped at the Holocaust about <laughs> a year, year and a half in. Yeah, probably a good idea. Yeah, and uh, you're very active on Twitter. Yes. Uh, do you still enjoy Twitter, or do you feel compelled? There was a time when I uh, I. Twitter lost all its joy. Okay. Uh, when I think when I was kind of writing monologue, topical monologue jokes for a living, right. I kind of, I was like, I'm out of ideas. I'm out of jokey ideas. And either like, if I thought of a really, really good joke, I'm like, oh, I have to use this for the show. And then if it didn't make it, it was like, well, like now this joke is like a day old or right. hours old so i can't really use it and also it's like kind of weird when you you know you're being paid you know honestly ungodly sums of money to write <laughs> jokes for television which should not be a job and then to be like this didn't get on but i need the people to hear it it's just like so such a like <laughs> i don't know such a, a a bratty thing to do that i didn't want to do that um and so then i would feel compelled like i need to have at least one tweet up a day just like keep my my you know loyal followers satisfied who i'm sure did not give a shit um so it became sort of a burden but now that i'm kind of out of the topical joke business i love it and obviously uh trump being president is a is a travesty on a national and international scale yeah 
However, the small joy is just getting to just trash him. Like I literally, I didn't, I never thought I would be this person, but I literally, I wake up, I troll the president, then I brush my teeth and get ready and get dressed and get ready for work. Yeah. It's very weird. You aggressively troll the president, which is great. <laughs> and I mean, you, you're super Some funny. Some days more than others. Today I was all about just at replying horrible people. I'm oh, not, really? o- I'm not always like that. Some days I have more creative jokes, but I think my feed has been almost exclusively about Trump and Trump associates for the last couple of months. And I I think people like it. I feel a little bad for people who followed me and are like, I didn't sign up for this. But also, it, I don't I don't know. I just want to write what I feel. It's just yeah. Twitter's for fun. So and that's what I feel like saying. Yeah. And I feel like people this is one of those few moments where I think the what we say about comedy is true on Twitter, that it's for a catharsis, that it's to yes. vent it, things. It makes me feel better about yeah. the world. It helps me deal with it. Yeah. Um, and people clearly need it because sometimes you post something, not you, but the general, you post something sort of like nice and pleasant and a fun little joke. And right. people are like, boring. Say something hateful about the administration. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example where like, this is maybe a couple months ago or weeks ago. Um, oh, it was, yeah, it was a couple months ago when that first travel ban was yeah. in effect. And... Um, uh, you know, it was that weekend where like there was just complete chaos at airports and this like basically international humanitarian crisis going on yeah. of like, you know, refugees, refugees being unable to escape, people going for medical aid, couldn't come to the U.S., all these horrible things. And then that night, that Friday night, Ivanka Trump posted that photo of her and her husband, Jared Kushner, and like black tie evening wear going oh, to yeah. some like gala. It was just so, such a like let them eat cake kind of just uh, tone deaf move that I just saw that photo and it was like them in these fancy clothes with their reflection in the mirror a little bit. And I, it was just this thought. I just replied to her. I'm like, just like at Ivanka Trump, surprised you guys have actually have reflections in the mirror. Just me venting. <laughs> and that's, we got like, I feel like it got like thousands of, uh, uh, of likes. And I, you know, it, not that I quantified my yeah. life and enjoyment, but I was like, wow. Like it just was like an off the cuff thought I had that was just me being like, I hate you for dressing <laughs> up in fancy clothes tonight. Yeah. And it just resonates with people. You know, sometimes I also have tweets to get like two likes and no retweets, but as you know, yeah. <laughs> as not you, but as, as a yes, person, as, as one a person who does comedy, as a Twitter person knows. Yeah. 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 But so yeah, it really is just catharsis. And if it connects with people, that's, good and if not then oh well <laughs> yeah cool well let's get into your obsession which is maybe about catharsis as well i don't yeah. know we'll find out uh is always i email people and say hey would you like to do the show what sure. are you interested in and you offered the great british baking show slash bake off yes i do have a question first so i offered i said chocolate or tv shows like mad men twilight zone and great british bake off what what made you decide you wanted me to talk about the great british bake off because i don't know much about it it's one of those shows where okay. everybody has come to me and said, you have to watch oh, this. I see. And then I one see. of my friends said, the, the, the American version isn't as good. You have to track down the British version. And then I just got stressed. And like, ah. Ugh, it's too much work. Okay. But I know a lot of people are super into it. And then I get to learn about it. <laughs> okay. So I haven't, I haven't seen the American version. I think that one's called The Great British Bake. Baking show, baking I think, show? because the Pillsbury owns Bake Off. Oh, is that right? I thought yeah. it, was, they, it was sort of like a... Um, Harry Potter philosopher sorcerer situation where they thought Americans wouldn't like understand like what a bake off is versus bake. <laughs> Didn't they change the name? The first Harry Potter yeah. movie was like the Philosopher's Stone, and then they changed it here to be the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, Stones. so They're like two different American America, examples. Yeah, America yeah. D- can't you know doesn't care about philosophers, and just like they don't <laughs> care about bake offs, they want baking shows. Yeah. So the uh, Harry Potter is because Americans are stupid, and the Bake Off baking show is because I think we're also litigious. St- yes. <laughs> so it's two, two different kinds yes. of stupidity. Um, and yeah, so I got into it because it was just, it was uh, on, it appeared on Netflix one day. I will watch almost anything British that appears okay. on a streaming platform <laughs> uh, or on regular television. Uh at, you know, I'll, mostly detective dramas, but also <laughs> clearly uh, cooking shows. And yeah, it appeared on Netflix one day. And there might have been like a Slate article I saw about it, like why it's so great. Yeah. I was like, oh, I guess I'll watch. And I was just instantly drawn in, which is, and, and I, which I think was the experience of a lot of American yeah. people experiencing it for the first time. And it's very, if you just read about the show without seeing it, it's very shocking because it's this very, it's shocking that Americans or just anyone would be so obsessed or, or really drawn into it because yeah. it's such a, a mild mannered, uh, uh, just uh, almost nothing of a show. It's just a baking competition uh, um, of amateur home bakers in England. And they're all these mild-mannered, sweet personalities. They all have day jobs. Like 
Some are like graphic designers or firemen, and they're just like these regular people who like to bake in yeah. their spare time, and they're all just so so nice and so polite. <laughs> and there's like no real drama. The all the drama, all the drama is like the baking, like the actual baking. Yeah, it's not like I mean, I also watch Top Chef where there's a lot of the drama is cooking and about ingredients and stuff, but it's also like they're kind of macho personalities and they're like their sleeve tats and like they're they're <laughs> the you know Hitler bit, youth yeah. haircuts and you're just like. <laughs> It's all like attitude. And they're like, we're in the fucking weeds, man. We got to do this. And like on the Great British Bake Off, they're just like, oh, no, this is not going as I planned. You know, and it's just so <laughs> I don't know. It's just, just a focus on the food and on the sweetness of it. And there's just something that's just very winning about okay. about all the people on it. There's there's no villains, really. Um, there's always like one one contestant who's the young ingenue, the young okay. female ingenue. There's always like a youngish man who seems like. He's too cool and too trendy to be into like home baking, but he is. Wow. There's always like a kind of a gruff, tough guy with a a, a man job, like fireman or builder or <laughs> uh, prison guard, who is like this amazing like prodigy baker of like dainty tea snacks, you know. Okay. And there's uh, you know, there and there's a lot of like older women who've just been baking for decades for their family, and there's just yeah, there's all these types, and they're just so sweet and so nice. And there's really no one you're not rooting for. Okay. Are you there uh, more than for the contestants or the hosts? Because everybody oh, loves the hosts and the judges, you know, right? I, I enjoy the hosts and the judges, but to me, they're they're just um, they're a very minor part of the appeal. Okay. I, I understand. Like they've, I think people like the judges because they have funny names. They're, the judges are Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood. Okay. Which uh, <laughs> I saw. I, I always thought Paul Paul Hollywood sounded like a porn name, and I saw someone like tweeted recently like Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood both sound like porn names. <laughs> I think only Paul Hollywood does. But yeah, it just sounds like what you'd call like an asshole who's very into like meetings and stuff. <laughs> oh, look at Paul Hollywood over there. Look at him writing his spec script. Uh, in Mr. Starbucks. Hollywood. Yeah. Paul Hollywood. <laughs> Dear Obsessed listeners, it is now time for Ad. We're doing a live recording of Obsessed right here in physically beautiful but emotionally exhausting Los Angeles. The show is Friday, April 28th at the Nerd Melt Showroom, and just in time for the season, it's all about big movie blockbusters. My awesome guests, Mark Ellis, Phoebe Bottoms, Audrey Kearns, and Will Weldon will compete to see who is the most obsessed with their favorite blockbuster. What will it be? Jaws? Fury Road, Batman Begins, Zoolander 2. For tickets and full info, visit josephscrimshaw.com slash live dash shows. Thanks for listening. Obsessively yours, Joseph. The two hosts are these two women, Mel and Sue, Sue Perkins and Mel, I forget her last name. They're always using like lame puns related to the name of whatever they're baking. Like, okay. If they're baking buns or whatever, it would be like, uh, I, I, I cannot think of a good pun, but they're just very lame mom joke puns about okay. baked goods. And people find them appealing, but I they're fine. Do they anger you or they're just fine? No, they're just fine. They're okay. to me, no, they're they're charming, but to me, the they're not the main appeal of the show. Um, they're just there to kind of move things along. And I mean, there's some of their commentary is funny, but there's just a lot of like lame puns. So I guess the main appeals are the the contestants. The just general spirit of uh, Britishness or <laughs> the maybe American imagination of Britishness. Yeah. And then the just the learning about uh, baking and all these different desserts that I or uh, and baked goods that I'd never heard of. Yeah. And techniques and, and things like I never heard of like whenever dough has to rise, I guess it's called like proving like the dough has to proof. And I've. That seems like something I should, you know, yeah. all my years on earth, I should have learned that by now. I just thought, a d like, dough rises. I didn't know what proofing was. So that was interesting. Um, yeah, just all these desserts that I, I thought I knew all the desserts because I'm a slightly overweight person, but uh, I don't. There's so many. Yeah. So if you're there for the contestants mostly. Mm -hmm. Is this a complete relaxing, like I'm just going to space out and listen to pleasant British people maybe fail at cakes a little bit? Or do you get caught up in like, I need the bass player guy to win today? It's 100% a great way to relax, to okay. just watch the show. Like you are, even though you're maybe really rooting for someone, if they don't make it, you're not devastated because they're like, I just had such an amazing time here and I learned so much and, you know, I made it this far and they're, ha they're not 
like that upset about it you know yeah. they're just like yeah i had a great time and now i'm going back to my life and it's because there's not you know it's not again like top chef where like they're gonna get a hundred thousand dollars and gonna get their own restaurants their entire career this is just like a fun weekend diversion yeah i don't know that much about the production but what it seems like is every weekend they all go to some like country house somewhere and they bake in these tents so like they have their normal life going on during the week where they kind of prepare for the assignments oh okay for the baking challenges so even that is way more relaxed i mean normally reality shows are like lock you yeah. in a room and cook you so with tension the structure of each episode is there's um a theme to every episode okay. like uh just bread or pastry or chocolate and then there's three challenges the first challenge is a signature bake which is one they have time at home to prepare for and it's, you know, some like uh, like if the theme is pastry, they'd have to all make like um, horns like those, you know, kind of a what's a, a, or like a baked an, horn. Yeah, or I'll just say like an eclair. They have to make okay. like a special eclair. Um, and then the second phase is the technical challenge. Now, this is where they are caught off guard. And Paul and Mary usually use a recipe from their own cookbooks and they they give them basically a a the recipe with like some things missing okay. from the recipe and they're like they unveil the ingredients <laughs> under a red gingham towel and they have this kind of like a recipe with parts missing and they're like make this and some of them sometimes it comes out looking exactly like what it should and sometimes it's a disaster and then they kind of blindly judge everyone's to see which comes closest to the ideal version of this pastry okay of this baked good rather and are you rooting for them to make a good one or is a comedy person do you enjoy like comic I mean, failure it, yeah i mean i was always a big fan of the website cake rex i don't <laughs> yeah. know if you've seen it it's yeah. like yeah a compilation of just disasters of cakes and <laughs> so it's always funny when something comes out a little like off but on the whole you want everyone you don't want anyone to i don't know fail miserably because again yeah. there's no villains there's no mean people there's no one you're like he needs to be off the show you're really you really want everyone to do as best as they can okay and um do the best that they can and so uh yeah so then there's there's a technical challenge where they have no preparation. And then there, the third is um, another challenge where they've had the week to prepare, and it's the showstopper. And <laughs> it's usually a big, elaborate uh, baked good that has to be, you know, obviously taste good and be very visually impressive. Oh, okay. And, and uh, it's just like such a well produced and uh, conceived show. And I, so. Yeah, I guess, I don't know, maybe a year or two, a year or two years ago, whenever uh, Netflix first put that one season on, I watched it and I was just wrapped and I, I really, I just spent the whole weekend watching it. And then they added two more seasons recently and it, I started watching them when I was going to do my taxes. Like I needed okay. something to just be on in the background <laughs> while nice. I needed for hours to just be like tabulating receipts and bank, you know, bank information. I just, and I had it on for just eight hours while I was just like <laughs> doing my, doing my taxes. And it was so great. So, I mean, I also recommend watching it not if you're not busy, but also it's a great thing to have on the background if you have a long, tedious task. So it was like light and pleasant and just yes. kept you engaged while you were in the horror. Yeah, it made it very painless to calculate all my deductions. <laughs> so you said that you thought you had been uh, familiar with most uh, desserts, most yes. bakery products. Have you started baking because of it? Has it made you want it's to bake? It crossed my mind. I, every time I watch a show, I'm like, I got to start baking. I could make a chocolate souffle. Uh, but I just honestly, it's a lot of effort and every recipe just has so many ingredients. So <laughs> I, it gives me the inspiration to want to start baking, yeah. but I, in actuality, I'm too lazy and just want to press play on the next episode rather than actually do something. Nice. Yeah. Uh, have you had more desserts because of it? Have you like want, went and ordered cakes and pies and uh, special I, horns? <laughs> I have not, uh, the horn thing I'm referring to, by the way, it looks sort of like a little like uh, cornucopia out of a flaky pastry. Oh, okay. that gives you any, like Damn. sort of like a lobster tail. That you sounds know, good. You know what that is? Yeah, that, uh, well, the cornucopia, but a lobster tail. Do you mean like, like the pastry? Like the pastry lobster tail. There's a pastry called lobster tail. Yeah, oh, it's, this is anyway, my mind. it's it's an Italian thing. I think. Anyway, um, it you know I think a lot of the things I've already heard of, I've heard of because they're available to me. Yeah. So the things that are are foreign to me, I haven't gotten because i don't see them yeah you know like they're like one challenge was something called like suet pudding and it's just like a they use the term pudding to describe any dessert but it's sort of like a puddingy thing made with like 
beef fat. <laughs> like okay. somehow they make they make the pudding, and I'm like, well, I am never gonna have that. <laughs> but uh, so a lot of the things I haven't heard of, it's because they're just like very British or very traditional French things that maybe like you just I wouldn't see in Los Angeles. Yeah. So, but, yeah. But if you went into the into a grocery store in Los Angeles and you saw a beef fat pudding, would you be like, hot damn? If I, I weren't I a ve- if I weren't a vegetarian, yes, <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. No, there's and they have uh, their desserts also sometimes have really great names like something called a jam roly poly and i'm just like so if i see a jam roly poly i'm gonna want that yeah it's sort of like a giant swiss roll okay yeah so it, yeah that is very british to just be sort yeah. of immersed in this like well it's a jam roly poly no big deal relax and it's they a made jam roly-poly. they had a challenge to make pita bread and they called it pita and i was just like wow what a world what a different world <laughs> they live in uh if you could hang out and have a drink with any of the judges or hosts which one would you want to like hang out with and get to know would it be paul hollywood or mary mm. berry it would either be Mary Berry or Mellor too. To okay. me, they're interchangeable. Okay. But, but fuck Paul Hollywood. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's fine. He sort of looks like a British Guy Fieri. <laughs> um, sorry, Guy Fieri. So that's how you're supposed to say his name. Uh, yeah, he's fine. But I think I've just been, uh, my view of him has been tainted by just like headlines of articles that I haven't actually read about okay. people speaking out against him. But I don't know what the problem with him is. It's but an I, easy name to turn against. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mr. Hollywood. <laughs> so you like the show, but you like it as a sort of rolling over you, like <laughs> Jimmy Roly Poly it's rolling so past It's so relaxing. You. Yeah. Um, you know, don't meditate. Don't get a massage. Just sit on your couch and watch The Great British Bake Off. So you, could you see yourself getting invested in a point to where you would fight with other people about it, where you would have like a strong opinion about how it should have turned out, like who should have won? I, You know, I mean, possibly, but... Well, two things. One, uh, as on all cooking competition shows, you can't actually taste the thing. So you're relying on what the judges are saying. And if they're like, this tasted better than that, you got to believe them. (laughs) But also, the judgments that they make all add up. They all make sense. They all seem right. There was never, there's never been someone eliminated or someone who won where I'm like, bad call. So it's all just, everyone's just so agreeable about everything. It's just so, it's just, I'm in a blissed out state when I'm watching it. And I feel like that is the... I don't know if that's the intended effect, but for Americans at least, I feel like it's just a very blissful competition show. Yeah. I mean, it seems like the intent is to make a competition show with, that's not all about iron yeah. and toughness and, and shame. The, and the who's intro gonna music fight. is just sounds like the beginning of like Antiques Roadshow. It's like these this like classical sounding music <laughs> and it's it's just the opposite, yeah, of like an iron chef or like it's the opposite of Gordon Ramsay yelling at a child. Okay. Nice. So Does this he is yell like, at children? I haven't seen oh, Master Chef. I'm Junior. sure he's yelling at a child right now. He's always yelling. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's are. British too, but somehow just you know the politeness skipped well, him. Well, maybe if he was strapped into a chair, forced <laughs> to watch Great British Bake Off for a long time, he would calm down. Um, I did read uh, some complaints. I looked at the Wikipedia page okay. for the show, and I read that there was some controversy in Britain because by the third series or season, they thought that the show is getting too naughty. Uh, what the quote was that there was an extra pinch of saucy spice in huh. the jokes that the hosts were making that they were too ribald. Well, um, so the season I've only seen the seasons that are on Netflix. I think there are six or seven seasons or okay. series, as they say, and uh, I think the ones that are on Netflix are four, five, and six, maybe. So I haven't seen the first couple, uh, which is very confusing because the first season they put on, which I think was like the fifth season. Uh, the contestants arrive and they're like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm here with Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood. And I'm like, who? Like this to me, this is like the pilot. And I'm like, what? Uh, but uh, they do. The, so Mel and Sue like to be a little um, risque with their puns and okay. with their jokes, like, uh, you know, about kind of a, a, a um, uh, with a, a finished baked good, a pie or something. They'll be like, well, you don't want a soggy bottom. Or, you know, it's stuff like that. There is really nothing beyond that level of of um, of crassness. Yeah. Would you want it to be more crass? No. I think it would maybe ruin the Great British Bake Off experience. Okay. So, cause, so you they, want it to be this they, exact I want light. lame puns. I want, and I want, I, want, I just want all mom and dad jokes, you know? Okay. Yeah. And it's fine if they're this sort of British style of yes. mom and dad joke. Soggy bottoms. Soggy bottoms and cracks. And yes. oh, those words mean two different Bu- things. And Ooh. like um, buns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, a wealth, a cornucopia right. of jokes. Um, they're not like, you know, talking about people's pussies. 
<laughs> and you don't want him to be. That would, you don't want him that to would be too far. That. Yeah, that would. I would stop watching. <laughs> uh, what if there was a literally a cat there, and it was then a, it was a pun. If maybe they said if they said puss, maybe I'd be okay, okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the line is. Good to know. Um, are there other life activities like baking's a uh, calm thing that a lot of times people do for relaxation in real life? Are there other like day to day activities that you would like to watch? A competitive show about like that are equally kind of yeah soothing. like showering or laundry or whatever i mean competitive showering would be interesting just who can shower the quickest and get everything <laughs> done i don't i wouldn't want to watch that i mean there's no. a lot of like position unflattering positions uh um let me think um I was going to say arguing. I'm like, there are debate shows, I guess, right? Uh, <laughs> it's not that relaxing also. I, you know, yeah, it's really, I can't really think of anything. Well, you could watch a competitive, mild disagreement, like yeah. roommates or spouses bickering. Just A competitive, mild disagreement would be nice. Yeah. Actually, I was recently on a podcast that's sort of like that. It was called, like, I'm Still Right. But anyway, okay. not to plug another podcast <laughs> on this podcast. Oh, no, that's that's what podcasts are It's on the Earwolf. Oh, no, not Earwolf. It's on the uh, HeadGum Network. <laughs> oh, man. Plug away. Plug away. That's what podcasts are for. <laughs> Me and my friend Andrew Law debate whether or not I should go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who who won? I feel like on the podcast it was a draw, but in real life he won because he, he's right. <laughs> he wanted you to not go to therapy? No, he wanted me to go. Oh, and okay. I was like, no, I shouldn't. And he's probably right, but yeah. I just had to argue that he wasn't. Would you be more inclined to go to therapy if it was somebody with a nice, peaceful British accent? Uh Oh, 100%. Also, if they were like <laughs> stirring a very fragrant chocolate cake batter the whole time. Well, there you go. If there are any therapists listening. But not like get out style where it, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not to hypnotize yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to calm you. Uh, is there anything that you would like to be able to judge other people for? Like it seems like. Oh, I it's... already judge people for everything. <laughs> There's nothing left. What do you mean? Uh, I guess on television. Oh. Would you like I'm... to be paid to judge people for a specific I thing? I mean, I would I would dream of, dream of that. Uh, I mean. I guess just how people look. <laughs> it's the easiest thing. <laughs> People's grammar and spelling and punctuation. That would be nice. Okay. Does that honestly bother you? Like when you're on Twitter, it's I, uh, well, it, a lot of bad grammar on Twitter. I sort of can't let any of that go, but I also don't want to be an annoying grammar Nazi. Yeah. Um. And so I... I won't say anything, but I'll just be like thinking it. Like certain things will... I have certain friends who I know have certain kind of blind spots when it comes to proper English and it'll uh, bother me but I just I wouldn't I would never dream of say it to, saying saying right. it to their face so actually it would be nice to finally let, it out. let that out yeah so you catalog it you know like I know that when my friend is starting a sentence it's going to end with this incorrect word or phrase right although I'm not like you know I'm not a traditionalist like I think you can end a sentence with a preposition I think that's perfectly fine and also with tweets sometimes you have to be more colloquial because it, yeah. it would be awkward if you weren't like uh like if I were something right if I was because like I you just want something to sound natural yeah so I will commit errors uh gr grammatical errors yeah um but I know I know the correct way to say it, <laughs> but I don't know that other people do. I feel so validated on the I wish I, were, <laughs> I, wish I was because I know it's were. Yeah. And I but like it was. But when it you sounds... write it sometimes like that, it's like, oh, it's just so arch and correct sounding, yeah. especially on Twitter where you don't want to be, you know, stiff. It so sounds you... like you're baking in a tent yes. in northern England. I wish right. I were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sounds very, very proper. So it would be a good experience for you, like a kind of therapy to be yes. paid on television to judge other people's grammar. Yes. But more, I, I would like that, but I would prefer to judge how people look okay. more. That would just bring me more pleasure. It could be more creative with the insults. Yeah. Yeah. And what about looks? Why why do you gravitate to looks uh, ahead of grammar? Is it... Oh, it's just easy. It's very... You just look at someone and you're like, <laughs> I have an opinion about this. Why do they have that haircut? What's going on with the length of those pants? There's just so many things. So it's choices, though. You wouldn't make fun of people for... Oh, no, no. Nothing they can't help. No. Okay. I'm not going to be like, ha ha, you're Asian. You know? Like... <laughs> It's totally understandable. Also, I love. I I would never say that to begin with. I I love Asian people. <laughs> Please cut this out. <laughs> I'll I'll listen back and see how it plays. Uh, so I was also reading on the Wikipedia site that the baking has increased in Britain because of the show. I believe it. Yeah, I'm like, sure it'll increase a tiny bit in America. The tiny percent of people who watch PBS and 
Uh, no, I I believe that because yeah, it inspired me to want to bake. I just personally am too lazy yeah. to. It's just not if, in your wheelhouse. At yes, all. if I were a different person, I'd be out getting like some enriched flour and some yeast. <laughs> you know, two ingredients of baking. I, now. Yeah, baking powder. Well, they don't use baking powder because they that's like a rising agent, and they naturally they prove things. And yeah, so they don't need it anyway. So you, but you're. I was gonna say you're like a smart person, which uh, is a <laughs> grammar and. I'm like issue. a very smart person. But you quote seem, Donald Trump. You seem like you know a lot about a lot of stuff. Right. Um, Not about cooking, but did yeah. you know like the term rising agent before you watched? Oh yes, of this? course. But okay. I didn't know. I just didn't know the term proving. Which I was shocked by because it seems so common in that world. And like yeah. I feel like I know a lot of baking terms just through kind of osmosis. But weirdly, I never learned that one. I'm trying to think. There, You know, there are certain terms and, again, dishes that I learned. But I know, I obviously know the basics. I've, as a kid, I always, you know, because, again, I was like a fat child. I wanted to be making, like, cakes and pies and brownies a lot. Did you make them as a child then? I, I would get into little, like, baking uh, phases. But uh, the problem was that... My mom was very cheap, okay. um, and so she's not going to go out and buy a new bag of flour just because I said I want to start baking something. So I'd have to use the, and she didn't really bake. You know, we would use like you know Betty Crocker mixes and stuff. So if I wanted to make something from scratch, we'd use the same old like years, maybe decade old bag of flour that was in the pantry. With her saying, "Oh, flour doesn't go bad." Um, I was a child. I didn't know better, and I to, and I couldn't just say to her, "Yes, it does." <laughs> it and really so, does. Uh, I remember I made, I don't know if you're familiar with the Jewish pastry, the hamantaschen. No. It's a three-cornered cookie. It's at best just fine. Even if okay. you make a good one, it's just okay. It's like a three-cornered uh, kind of short breadish sort of pastry with uh, a jam or some kind of soft filling like okay. poppy seed or uh, prune jam. Those are the most common ones. Sometimes you'll see chocolate or strawberry. Anyway, so it was. they're made for the holiday of Purim. Uh, and so I remember one perm, I was like, I want to make hamantaschen. And we just had this like old, like, again, probably 10 year old flour. How old are you gold when you're metal. like, I want to make this very specific cookie? I don't know, maybe like 10 or something. Okay. I don't know. And so there's just old flour in the pantry because, again, no one really bakes my family. And I made it and it tasted weird because of this old flour. <laughs> it tasted weird. And then from, and then I would, uh, after that, I tried to make other baked goods. Like I tried to make, um, it's not cornbread. Some like I don't know. I, I tried to make other things. And they all had this same weird taste. Yeah. And my mom then, and my mom would be like, "Oh, it tastes like the hummantosh." And so then from then on for years, <laughs> it was like everything you make has that hummantosh and taste. And then finally one day, we bought a new bag of flour, and guess what? Everything tasted normal. Uh, and you know, later on, as I was I, I was an adult and bought my own groceries. Groceries, I realized the key to good tasting food is freshness, yeah, and good ingredients. And so I was just forced to bake with just like shit flour. So I feel like I, in the family, got a bad rap for having yeah. bad tasting baked goods because I was given bad ingredients and I felt vindicated later, yeah. but it was too late. <laughs> My passion for baking had been extinguished. Well, yeah. what what happened that you liked, you were invested in baking, you made stuff that repeatedly didn't taste good because you were invested enough in baking, but now you're like, I love a baking show, but I'm still not going to bake. What happened to the baking passion? Um, you know, I could st honestly, I might after this podcast go out and buy some stuff. No, I, I think it's just more when I stop and think about all the things I need. I'm just okay. like, ugh, I could just buy this. Right. It'd be, it would be cheaper to just like buy the thing. Yeah. And then also, if I make you know, like a whole loaf of something, I'm gonna eat it all. And I like, <laughs> I mean, my roommate will maybe have some, but like, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to basically fatten myself up. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> so that's, it's not that's relaxing. I, I say that's another. Yeah, that's definitely another uh, consideration is that I will eat everything I make, and I should not do that. Okay. So if you could manage to bake like one small cookie, yes, that would be gold. Oh, if I could bake for one, yeah, or two, uh, but still me eating both servings, I would do it probably in a heartbeat. Nice. Yeah. I'm really contradicting myself a lot here. I'm like, it's because I'm lazy. No, it's because I eat too much. So I don't really know what to tell you other than maybe I will start baking. I don't know. We'll see. If someone created a baked dish named after you, what would you want it to be like? What would you want the dish to be? I mean, it definitely involved chocolate. Can I just name something that already exists because I really sure. like it? Well, mm, so I ha there's this really good pie place in New York City called Petey's Pies. And they have something that's a, um, it's a brown bottom almond chest pie 
And I was not familiar with chess pie until I went to Petey's Pies. It's like very a very buttery. It's sort of like a sugary, buttery okay. kind of like chess, like C H E S S. Yeah, like the sport okay. thing. <laughs> and I, has, is it a, the game? I don't, you can see how nerdy I am. Like the sport of chess. <laughs> the sport of chess. The Played by activity. old people in yes. parks. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of a. Um, it's sort of like a yellowy, just like butter sugar kind of okay. thing but it, it, so it's um, an almond kind of flavored version of that with just this amazing chocolate at the bottom with kind of almond sprinkled on top it's such a good pie i would do that but maybe make it like a little have the chocolate be a little spicy oh really yeah maybe that would be my little twist on it <laughs> <laughs> do you feel spicy as a person I, I, no i just well i love spiced or salted chocolate okay but yeah. if somebody was coming to eat this it was yes. named just dweck this is the yes. just dweck chess Okay. Pie? Is it is it a pie? Yes. Okay, so just dweck chess pie, and somebody bit into it and said, damn, this is chocolate, but it's a little spicy. Would you be like, yeah, that's me? Oh, yeah. I'd be like, you just bit into my essence. <laughs> no, I, as a person, I'm not spicy, but I do love spicy chocolate. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I uh, when I was in Berlin, like, almost two years ago, I went to the uh, flagship Ritter Sport store. Okay. Are you familiar with the Ritter Sport no. chocolate bars? No. Again, another thing that should not have sport in it. It's a Ritter Sport <laughs> is the it's a brand of chocolate, okay. which is the opposite of sports. Yes. Sitting and eating a bar of chocolate, they come in a square. Okay. You, I've, you've I definitely seen, seen them seen at them. convenience stores. Yeah. They're just it says like quality in a square, and it's like this square that's like marzipan or like whole hazelnuts or the like biscuit and chocolate. You've definitely okay. seen. Yes, 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 yes. Or uh, the uh, the cornflake ones. They've like cornflakes in it. Anyway. Uh, they are like flag- flagship stores in Berlin and I went there and you, in addition to buying kind of any of their flavors, you can also design your own chocolate bar. Mm. And I guess this is not a baked good, but I designed my own chocolate bar and it was honestly the most exciting 20 minutes of my life. And I want to go back to Berlin just to go back to that store. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that you designed? It was, uh, so you were allowed, I think like four toppings or something on okay. it. And it was like white milk or dark chocolate and then any toppings you wanted. And I think I did dark chocolate with uh, i think it was cacao nibs pink peppercorn which is like pepper maybe like little like dried raspberry that might have been it or there might have been almonds i don't remember nice yeah it was so good again it had the spice yeah it had a uh, had some almond it's just, i guess it's a recurring theme what i what i like to eat yeah, a little chocolate <laughs> yeah. a little spice is this interesting to anyone listening <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it just is. me naming things i like to stuff in my mouth <laughs> Hey guys, this is Sarah Meyer, co-producer of this show, and I'm walking down Pico Boulevard uh, in Westwood, interviewing people about the Great British Bake Off, uh, and I'm a little out of breath because I just walked briskly away from a dude who I think wanted to steal my sound gear, but uh, whatevs. Have you ever heard of the Great British Bake Off? No. 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 Do you like to bake? No, I'm terrible at it. I hate following directions. I'm too rebellious for baking. Well, what do you like to eat that then you could learn how to bake? Carrot cake. You know, Rice Krispie treats are fantastic. Does that count as baking? I'm going to count that as, well, probably not. Do you enjoy baking? Yes, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> Everything burns, pretty much. Baking? Yes, yeah. Ch- chocolate cake, banana pie. All kind of uh, different of cookies. If you were going to have British people judge you for doing something that you're good at, what would you want them to watch you do? I love British people. They have this way of making everything seem romantic and exciting. I'd love to watch them make fun of me and the work that I do. I do sound healing and crystal therapy, so I'd love to hear them pull me apart. (laughs) Okay, if you were going to do a reality competition show about anything, uh, what would you want to compete at? What are you good at? Funny jokes, like the way I talk to women. For example, like if I am seeing, you know, a woman, and even I don't know know her, I tell her, oh, hello, darling, how are you? So women, you think women like that? Yes, uh, because uh, none of the women got offended. Do you consider yourself woke? What's what's the woke? Never mind. If you were going to be in a reality competition show, what would you want to compete at? What are you really good at? Essay writing. <laughs> what would that look like? It was probably like 
they give you a prompt on the big screen and then they give you a certain amount of minutes to write the best possible prompt you could yeah. write. And then you could read it out loud? Yeah. What if you could have an actor read your essay? Who would you get? Ryan Gosling. Yeah. <laughs> Just because he's super attractive. Yeah. Okay, if you were going to write an essay for Ryan Gosling, what would it be about? Masculinity. <laughs> We're going to move on to our How Obsessed Are You question. Sure. So there are no right or wrong answers to this. And I okay. understand that this is an obsession where you found something peaceful to watch. Mm -hmm. And by definition, a peaceful obsession is right. not necessarily as obsessive as other obsessions. Of course, yeah. So do you think about the Great British Bake Off every day? I have recently, but that'll probably go away because I just only recently, like I finished watching it over the weekend. So Okay. I, yeah. At the moment, I'm thinking about it quite often. Okay. So when you think about it, what do you think about? Is it just that you remember a particular great baking pun or do you remember somebody's triumphant cake? Yeah, something will rem something I'm eating will maybe remind me of something on the show or uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just think of Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry. And that's a happy thought. Yeah. Right? A little warm Paul Hollywood moment. Yeah. <laughs> Has the Great British Bake Off ever made you cry? No. It's not trying to, right? No, it, that's... That would not be a reason to watch The Great British Bake Off. I okay. mean, there are moments when there's maybe a a contestant you really like who's not doing as well as, you know, um, you want her to or uh, someone gets sent home that you, I mean, they always kind of deserve it, but yeah. it's still like sad to see them go. But I've never cried. Okay. I'm not an insane person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, you would never cry at The British Bake Off. Can you imagine any scenario in which the show would make you cry if it just disappeared from netflix would that make you cry i guess i've seen all the seasons so now i that would be f i would be fine with that <laughs> i mean i could probably find it on youtube i guess if you told me I, I mean i wouldn't cry but if you told me i wouldn't be able to see any more like the remaining three or four seasons i'd yeah. be like a little annoyed but i i wouldn't cry no. right and it's really Again, good that we don't cry over being mildly annoyed or we all be weeping all the time right yes i'm yeah no, I again, I'm not a psychotic person, so I would not cry over this. It's a TV okay. show. So, so far you have wanted to reiterate clearly that you like Spice and that you're not a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. So we've got those points, I think. Uh, would you break up with someone who hated the Great British Bake Off? No. no I, yeah, it's, um, again, because it's, a, because it's a British show, limited number of episodes, it really plays a very limited role in my life. Like there's okay. a week or a weekend where I'm really into it. Yeah. And then I forget about it the rest of the year. So if someone really hated it, I'd I think I'd try to change their heart. I'd try to be like, What are you saying? What are you what are you thinking? You have this is objectively wrong to not like the show. <laughs> but and I would try to convince them um to come to my side, to come to reason. Yeah. But I would not break up with them. Now do you this like This also presupposes I'm I'd ever be in like a regular relationship with someone, which will you know, probably won't occur. What do you mean by regular? Oh, I just mean like a romantic relationship. Okay. <laughs> uh so if you met someone through Great British Bake Off, would you think that Like that... a like an online fan club forum or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little meetup. Sure. Would you think that that relationship has better odds of working out because you came together over something that's calm and peaceful and rational i do think the show is so universal in its appeal that it's not that it wouldn't bode well but it just wouldn't mean enough that we both liked it because okay. it's like it's kind of saying we both like the beatles you know what i mean it's like <laughs> yeah everyone everyone who watches the great british bake-off mostly likes it yeah 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 so it's like basing a relationship just on a light breeze that's pleasant. yes oh i enjoyed that oh i did too like that doesn't mean anything let's get married yeah, yeah. Would you want the hosts of the Great British Bake Off to speak at your funeral? The hosts, not the judges. Hosts or the judges? The, I would say I would want the hosts too, but not the judges. Because okay. the judges, Paul and, and Mary, they're you know they're good at judging baked goods, but they're not um, as witty. Yeah. As like kind of lamely witty as the hosts, the presenters. Yeah, I would like them to maybe say a few words. Yeah. Little like ever so slightly naughty puns. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Do you like puns in general as a comedy person or do they get if they're on your nerves? I, they have to be really good for me to enjoy them. They yeah. have to either be really good or I thought of them. And then I really <laughs> like them. Okay. I don't think you need therapy because I think that's the most <laughs> honest thing I've ever heard a comedian <laughs> say on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Jokes are great as long as I wrote them. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Would you ever write fan fiction about the Great British Bake Off? 
I mean, as a joke, I'd maybe write a piece and then send it to McSweeney's or something. But I, not like I wouldn't earnestly write yeah. fan fiction. Only if it were a joke. Yeah. Okay. Would you see a movie version of the Great British Bake Off? Yes. I don't know. I mean, would that just be two episodes? Like you'd have to go to a theater <laughs> and it'd be like the big Great British Bake Off. Like yeah. oh yeah, I I would see that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Three D. Oh yeah. So you can really just. I want to see that souffle rise into my face. <laughs> nice. Uh, if a bear was blocking you from watching the Great British Bake Off, would you try to get around the bear? Here's my question. Is the bear in my apartment or is there a plugged in TV in the woods? Uh, let's go with the plugged in TV in the woods because <laughs> I haven't discussed that scenario Wait, before. Wait, well, I, I was too distracted thinking of my own answer. If the what, if the bear was in my way, would Yeah, so I... there's a TV in the woods okay. that you've set up for reasons right. we can discuss if sure. we want. And you're going to, oh, I can, I'm going to relax and watch Great British Bake Off and then uh, a bear's steps in front of the television what do i do yeah well i would do whatever you do when a bear approaches what play dead or or, or uh, scream at it. i forget i think there's conflicting advice about what to do if a bear approaches you you're uh, supposed to sleep pretend to sleep and then scream as though you're having bad dreams is that true no oh it's just i don't a know combination of the things you said uh i don't know yeah i don't know what you're uh we're, you're supposed to do but whatever you're supposed to do when a bear comes i will do that because I value my life over enjoying yes. uh, the witticisms of Mel and Sue. Yes. Yeah. If the bear seemed to just want to sit peacefully in the woods and watch the show with you, would you sit and watch with the bear? Or would you be too weirded out by the bear? Is this a like cart friendly cartoon bear or like a real like revenant bear? bear this is a revenant bear yeah i would get out of there i mean if again i would do whatever the advice is for when you see a bear okay i, I think yeah. yeah i think the actual advice is to you know my joke response still. is like yeah i'd watch it with the bear but like no i'd get the fuck out of there <laughs> thank you for your honesty yeah uh this is the final question sure. and it's very weird uh the final how obsessed are you question if you couldn't watch the great british bake-off without you or someone you love first being punched in the crotch would you still watch the great british bake-off yeah, because if you punch me in the crotch, like I don't have a, a penis, it wouldn't hurt like that. I mean, it would like it would hurt a little, but yeah, you know, the pubic bone's always a little delicate. But I, I'd be punched in the crotch to watch it. Yeah. I mean, do you think it would still Someone be relaxing? I, um. Oh, like repeatedly while I'm watching it, or like <laughs> no, right no. before? No, just one, one per season. Yeah, I, w- I would. It would be. Oh, I'd be over in like a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. How wait? How hard of a punch and by who? Uh, well, you can decide these things. Yeah, uh, leave I mean, these questions open. A ended. mild, like, kind of right hook to the to the pubis. <laughs> that's uh, that's totally fine. A gentle glancing British blow. Yeah. Yeah. Just poof. That would be nice. Uh, ask people to make a noise to sum up their obsession. Can you make a noise to sum up your obsession with the with, show? Mmm. Because everything on there makes me go, mmm, that looks good. <laughs> so is that noise just that baked good looks uh, yes. good? It's or like is it Homer like... Simpson, mmm, donuts, basically. Oh, okay. Although, don't love donuts. You don't like donuts? Yeah, surprising t- uh, twist of fate, I know. I uh, Especially in Los Angeles, where there are donuts everywhere, like here, practically here my flying thought- through the air. Here's my thoughts on, here are my thoughts on donuts. Um, to me, even the most amazing donut is just fine. Okay. Like I don't dislike donuts, but to me they're they're just nothing. They're not worth the calories. Okay. Even the best donut is not worth the calories. Where I, I'd say a amazing donut is still not as good as average cheesecake okay. or an average pie or cake. So are you judging it donuts? Is this for you personally, or is that your opinion that those of us who are wasting precious calories on donuts are? are no, it's my mad. opinion. If you personally love and enjoy donuts, then obviously go ahead and go to town. Yeah. But me personally, I also I don't yeah I don't love. I'm talking about yeast donuts. Okay. Cake donuts I enjoy because they're like cake. Yeah. I'm sure you know the difference, right? Yes. Yeah. I like. So yeast like donuts, donuts to me are like which are I think prototypical donuts. Uh, they're just like nothing to me. Yeah, they're just a waste. They're a waste. Yeah, they they don't taste bad. They definitely don't taste bad. But like they're they're just not. They're a waste. They're not worth it. Yeah. Uh, so I rate people's obsession. Okay. On a scale of one to seven, seven right. being the highest. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, four. Seven baked out of seven baked Alaskans. Okay. That's the total you can okay. get. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, do you have Do you have a guess? My estimate was gonna be three or four. Yeah, I think uh, let's go with three point five. Okay, which is great. This makes me really, really happy. Great, because normally people come on the show and they think it is a test to prove that either they know the most 
or they are right. the most obsessed. Right. Sometimes people are upset if I don't rate them high enough. No, I don't care. You're I would be my curve. I would be disturbed if you, I felt I needed to be more obsessed with this show. It's yeah. just a it's a, a pleasant diversion. Yeah. Uh, that I am currently just finished. You know, I'm currently interested in because I just finished watching a bunch of and uh, yeah. Yeah. But the fact that you answered the first how obsessed are you question of if you're thinking about it every day, even for something that's a pleasant diversion, and right. I know you're going to have another pleasant yeah. diversion soon, the idea that you that it occupies enough space in your brain where your mind floats to it suggests that you need a pleasant diversion. So even though your I obsession with this isn't huge, it's more it of a, 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 need. a recency effect. You know, okay. it's like something, you know, I just it, I think, again, if we go forward a week, I won't be thinking of it. <laughs> OK. Yeah. But you'll be thinking of something else in the same way probably yeah Uh, probably also something related to tv i watch uh quite a lot of tv and i love it and i work in it so i feel like it's just i feel like i started working in television so that it would not be like pathological for me to be so into television okay yeah so that's kind of it's not an obsession because it's your profession but it gives you permission to give me cover <laughs> it gives you cover yeah <laughs> fair enough can you tell people where they can find you and plug sure. your podcast and all that um you can find me on twitter at the dweck the d-w-e-c-k you can find me on instagram at jess dweck j-e-s-s-d-w-e-c-k i know i should have the same handle for both i know but <laughs> it's a long story and yeah that's basically where you can find me i don't really i have i'm jess dweck on snapchat but i don't really use it that much and I don't use Facebook. I don't want. Any, I don't want anyone I, d- I don't know to friend me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Understandably. And so. uh, yeah, that's about it. And do you, are you still doing the podcast with Mike? Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, subscribe to and listen to my podcast called "How to Be a Person," which I host with uh, my friend and fellow comedian slash writer Mike Drucker. Uh, it's on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all your typical yeah. podcast listening uh, apps. Cool. Yeah. I like that you specified that people should subscribe and listen. (laughs) None of this just subscribing. Yeah. Subscribe, listen, contribute to our Patreon, even if you've never listened to it. No, kidding. (laughs) I mean, you should, but only if you think we deserve it. You should. Mike and Jess are both great. Give them money. Uh, Here's some quick plugs for this show, and then I have some final questions that are just weird questions that don't have anything to do with anything. Great. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram is at Joseph Scrimshaw. You can follow Obsessed Podcast on Twitter and Facebook as at Obsessed Podcast. For info on all my upcoming shows and comedy albums and stuff, you can check out my website at josephscrimshaw.com. You can also support Obsessed by backing us on Patreon while you're also backing Mike and Jess. For as little as $1 a month, you get access to our monthly patron-only bonus episode. For full info on that, go to patreon.com slash josephscrimshaw. All right, so here are the final questions. Wait, one quick question yeah. before we get into the final questions. Did you ask all those same questions for everyone? For these final questions? For No, for those how obsessed are you questions. I change them out a little bit. Has anyone, has there ever been an answer that's really shocked you in terms of how obsessed someone was with something? Like that Like bear like, level. Yeah, I'll, I'll let a bear kill me to do this. Yeah, I, I don't know. If, I feel like people usually want to play along up to a point. Right. I have been surprised at how much people negotiate with the crotch question. I see. Oh, right. The crotch so I, I phrased it as, I change it up sometimes, but it's, I usually do it, and I phrase it as so, you or someone you love. Right. And a thing that has surprised me is when people offer someone in their family that they clearly <laughs> don't love. Yeah. And they're like, no, I would Uncle let... Steve can get punched in the crotch. Like, I... no, the point is you have to love them, not be related to I them. I would offer anyone I love to get punched in the crotch <laughs> just for no reason, just for me to watch. Uh, I'm sure there's difference in men and women who are willing to be punched in the crotch, right? It's really not that big of a deal Yeah, being punched in the crotch. Like I, it's, it's, a... A, it's a sensitive area, but in the same way that like your stomach or boob is a sensitive area, but it's not like you're not going to be doubled over in pain and out of breath. Right. I mean, there's a wide variety of opinions uh, that I've got from women about how much right. it hurts. Right. Some men are like, oh, no, man, I can't feel that pain, kind of like really traditional. <laughs> and other people are like, I really do want to have children. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a weird, yeah. dumb question, but I right. keep it around because I get such weird, interesting. I think being punched different... in the crotch would hurt the person punching because there's not, I mean, there's there's obviously some squish down there, but it's mostly like the pubic bone. Right. And I feel like it would hurt the puncher. Yeah, well, anyway. good. They should be hunting. <laughs> yeah. Hurt, right? Why, why yeah. are they punching people in the crotch? Right, yeah. Well, so don't, pu- don't punch women in the crotch. <laughs> don't grab them in the crotch. Just 
stay away unless they want you to come in that area then i mean you know enter that area you know what i mean anyway. when i'm interviewing women should i ask that question is would you like to hurt someone's fist with your crotch <laughs> yes <laughs> would you like someone to break their fist on your pubic bone <laughs> That's going to be uh, harder to explain, <laughs> but I think I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try next time. So uh, here are the final questions. Sure. If you could shoot one of these two things out of your hands, which would you choose, fire or printer ink? Well, I mean, fire is more useful, but I'm so afraid of fire. How would you use but wait, fire? But wh what would the printer ink, like, could I shoot it out into, like, the written word, or is it just, like, splat? In a... Oh, yeah, I think you could shape it into a written word. That'd be super cool. Oh, yeah, I would want printer ink. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's more productive than fire. Yeah. Fire, I'm, I mean, they're just those like uh, striker things you can use <laughs> that are just so easy. Uh, and fire is, well, I, I don't know. What if I'm like, my sleep, I accidentally shoot it. I just wouldn't oh, yeah. want fire. I, I'm so, I, I'm so afraid of fire. Hand fire is a hazard. Yeah. So I think you made the right choice on printer ink. If you could mute phrases in real life the way you can mute phrases on Twitter, what kind of phrases would you mute in real life? Throwing someone under the bus. <laughs> that uh, one came fast. Let's oh um the something of it all. Have you heard that a lot? Like no. the uh like I feel like I hear it in writers' rooms, like, oh, we need to solve the the Kramer of it all. You oh, know, like yeah. not that I was in the Seinfeld writers' room, but uh, <laughs> like they, they they I feel like people use that and I can't stand it. It just seems so not right. That's all that's coming to mind at the so moment. So something of it all, that's a good one, uh, as I understand it now, because it, it seems lazy to be oh. in a writer's room. Oh, here's another one. I feel like I've talked about this on podcasts before, so I sound like a broken record, but people who say on accident instead of by accident. Oh, really? That's, oh, it grates on me so hard. It just makes you sound stupid in my mind. I know I think it's like a generational and regional thing that's happening. Yeah. But people my age who grow, who, you know, are from the Northeast say on purpose and by accident and that is just the way it should be and has been for years and it i when i hear on accident i just to me i think you have like no teeth and you're a you <laughs> didn't do book learning fair enough uh the final question for everyone on the podcast is what is happiness just doing your taxes watching the great british bake-off no uh I, for me, it is just like watching TV and eating. <laughs> <laughs> so is it that you are not stressed by the yeah, challenges it's feel, of professional well, it's, life? It's also, uh, it's or like sleeping in on a weekend. It's just like not uh, having nothing on your schedule. Yeah. It's like a, a, a day when not only do you have nothing on your schedule, but you shouldn't have anything on your schedule. Okay. It's not like you're unemployed and you're, you know, it's just uh, feeling like you don't need to be doing anything. Right. And but you it's can earned. do whatever you want. Yeah. But because, yeah, it's earned. Yeah. Because if you're just unemployed, then. That's hard. That's the worst. That is the opposite of happiness. It. Yeah. But yeah, it's a non-stressed feeling of being able to do nothing. Nice. So happiness is being employed, but not working <laughs> happiness is the weekend everyone's yeah. working for the weekend i've heard <laughs> that's a great answer thank you so much for doing the podcast oh yeah it was great it was fun that is our podcast you've been listening to obsessed joseph scrimshaw and his guest shared some stories with the rest rate five stars if you're impressed oh you know what i don't like on twitter i'm seeing a lot and i'll probably end up doing it or making fun of it People say in asterisk, asterisk like um, extremely blank voice. Like, oh, yeah. Extremely, extremely Batman voice, extremely Trump voice. And then some, I'm like, that just, that's not, it's not how words go together.